Hello and welcome to Let's Play Star Strider by Luke Sharp. This is book number 27 in the Fighting Fantasy series. Here's the front cover. There we go. Okay, uh, let's read the synopsis. Fighting Fantasy books, over 10 million copies sold worldwide. Cunning opponents and deadly androids await you as an intergalactic bounty hunter. The unscrupulous Gromulans, who have long been based on the obscure planet Earth, have kidnapped the galactic president. You are the top rogue tracer of that sector of the galaxy. You have 48 hours before the top. You have 48 hours before the top secret contents of the president's mind will have been extracted by Gromulan brain scan. Can you overcome your lethal opponents, find the president, and rescue him in time? Part story, part game, this is a book in which you become the hero. Two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need. You decide which routes to take, which dangers to risk and which foes to fight. Cover illustration by Alan Craddock, I think that reads. And there are Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone. I always think that photo, or rather those photos, um, were taken on holiday or something. Anyway, um, let's carry on reading. Puffin Books, Star Strider. When the Gromulans kidnap the Galactic President and hide him somewhere on planet Earth, the powers that be naturally turn to you, for you are the top rogue trace of the sector where this minor planet is situated. Your job is to rescue him. You do not know where he is, but you know that you will be up against cunning opponents and some of the deadliest androids in the galaxy and you are well aware that there are likely to be many unforeseen dangers as well. You have only 48 hours in which to succeed. After that, the brain scanning of the President will be complete. Two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need to embark on this thrilling adventure, which is complete with its elaborate combat system and a score sheet on which to record your gains and losses. Many dangers lie ahead, and your success is by no means certain. You decide which routes to follow, which dangers to risk, and which adversaries to fight. Okay, there's some more books there. There we are. Okay, so we've done um, uh, Crypt of the Sorcerer, and now we're doing Star Strider. Brilliant. Okay, Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone present Star Strider by Luke Sharp, illustrated by Gary Mays, Puffin Books. Okay, to Isabel and the Felines from Whisters 4. Okay, looks like it was published in 1987. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, um, here's the contents. Okay, let's read the mission. Um, if you want to skip to paragraph one, I'll put a timestamp, as they call it, in the video description, which you can press, and it will take you straight to paragraph one. Um, but for everyone else, let's read the, uh, the preamble. Um, the mission, Rogue Tracer. A hunter of fugitives, criminals and wanted beings who have a price on their heads. Formerly known as bounty hunters, licensed by the Trace Beam organization. Elite rogue tracers are known as Star Striders. Encyclopedia Galactica. Okay. A special message follows. The Gromulans have kidnapped President Zerin of Galaxy One Federation. He has been taken to a quadrant in the northern hemisphere of the planet Earth. It is feared that he is being brain scanned at this very moment, and the Zand Corporation assures us that his cephaloprotector will hold out only for a further 48 gravity hours. After that time, our computer defence codes will be in Gromulan hands, and probably in the hands of our enemies, the Empire of the Purple Flag. You are the best rogue tracer in Sector 6. In, in the galactic top money-making table, you rank 97. You have been chosen very carefully, and your mission, should you decide to accept it, standard contract, MI special rates, is as follows. You will make your way to Earth under the pretext of your rogue tracer activities. Locate the President and get him out. Space Fleet 7 will be waiting in Earth orbit for your signal. Please note that successful completion of your mission will make you very rich, but if you do not accept the assignment, Trace Beam assure us that they cannot guarantee the future flow of criminal records to your terminal for tracing. Please indicate your acceptance of the mission Y slash N. Thank you. Further details may 
Ugh, further details now follow. Now, the Gromulans are a humanoid, hyper-intelligent people of unknown origin who have previously only dabbled in world-scale terrorism. They are experts in the construction of androids and are masters of illusion. They are the originators of Illusovision 70, the galaxy, the galaxy Ent Corporation, but were robbed of all copyright in the last century. Their latest invention is the Illusoscope. Uh, is the Illusoscope. A portable illusion generator. Now the illusoscope, I say, a portable illusion, a portable illusion generator. Blimey, what a tongue twister! Um, the Gromulans will be expecting a rescue attempt, so beware. To assist you, we are activating our planted spy androids in that sector. Look out for these and the code match signal, but be extremely careful. The Groms are experts in turning dedicated androids. The Gromulans have been using Earth as a base for the last century. It is a small, insignificant planet on the edge of the galaxy. Once heavily populated, but now in decline, most of its native inhabitants have emigrated to Alpha Cent. Its only source of credit is the servicing of freight cruisers and the mining of salt. Unfortunately, the Phozon crystal does not function in that solar system and we cannot pinpoint locations with sensomatics. You will have to signal the rescue fleet once you have found the president. The remoteness of the earth and the lack of sensor detection has meant that fugitives have flocked to the planet. You will find many targets on earth so you may be kept busy in your normal profession. This makes, you, uh, this makes the rescue more difficult but also strengthens your cover. Likely enemies Gromulans. Gromulans are very intelligent humanoids who would rather surrender than risk a fight in the physical sense. They specialize in deception and can talk the three hind legs of a Wookiee. They were, no, uh, they were nomadic but have settled on Earth for the last hundred gravity years where they have developed their androids and patent illusoscope. Some reports talk of an addiction to chess and small Earth snails. Gromulan androids. These can vary tremendously in design and type. They are the main power base of the Groms and the Excel class are very dangerous. You are skilled in techniques of fighting androids and will have a good chance against guards, Grompoles, admins, sweepertrons, etc. But try to steer clear of Excels. If you do, if you do get close to one, probe for, de probe for deactivation points. Now, the Groms fear their creations turning on them, and all models have built-in weak spots. As with all standard types, a badly damaged android will self-destruct. Fugitives and criminals. You may meet anyone from a tax, from a tax dodging Therian to a pirate prince. Many will leave you alone, but if they suspect you of being a rogue tracer, they may run or attack. Remember, you operate within the galactic law and are bound not to kill human beings. If you do, you will be a fugitive and be hunted down. If you do trace fugitives, cache and mark them for future collection. Um, Howlgans. These are local feuding groups of native Earth origin, believed to number 80 to 90 tribes. They base their fanaticism on some long-forgotten religion, which revolves around colours of clothing, generally scarves. Each tribe has its own style and colour. Their individual combat potential is zero, but they can be irritating in large numbers. You might be able to use them to your advantage. Most important among the tribes are Ra'al, Juve, Stien, Elpul and Ginners. You do not, um, do not on any occasion wear a coloured scarf. Halgans will only take offence. Illusory monsters and demons. Groms have a liking for this sort of thing. Always remember that the illusoscope will not be very far away. You will be frightened. Gromulan illusions have been known to make a Brontean take fright. Note that they can also be on a very large scale. Weapons. Yeah, weapons. Rogue tracers do not carry many personal arms. The basic weapon is the Catchman, designed by Ulidor Zoni. It shoots out a fine liquid plastic which takes the form of netting, wraps itself around the prey and thus totally incapacitates him, her or it. Unfortunately, it has a high failure rate, 
33 percent i thought almost thought for a second that was um, per cent as in unit of money how stupid of me um high failure rate 33 percent it's because normally percent is written as one word that's yeah that's why i got confused yeah, a percent is normally written as one word. Anyway, 33%. Rogue tracers are skilled in the use of all weapons. Blasters, stun guns, even the old-fashioned neutron swords. But in the last resort, they rely on their quick thinking, fast reflexes, and superb fitness. Abilities. The mission you are about to undertake will involve your travelling on a strange planet and facing unknown dangers. You must therefore determine your strengths and weaknesses. You will need two dice, a pencil and an eraser. Scores, clues and time factors are to be recorded on the adventure sheet provided. Pages 22 to 3. Skill. Roll one die, add six to this number and enter the total in the skill box. A high skill score shows good fighting ability. Okay, roll one die and add six. Let's do that. No, no, yes. Okay, so add six. That gives me 11. So skill 11. Here's my adventure sheet that I prepared earlier. Right. Stamina, roll two dice, add 12 to the result and enter the total in the stamina box. Let's do that. Roll two dice. Yes, 11 plus 12 is 23. Good, right. Uh, this shows how fit you are and how determined you are to succeed in your mission. The higher the score, the longer you will survive. Stamina will be lost and restored th throughout the mission. Always remember to look after yourself. If food is available, have some. If rest is opportune, take it. Remember, you cannot go on forever like a phoson-powered crinkletron. A high stamina score will also help you out of difficult situations that require physical effort, such as running, jumping, leaping, swimming, etc. Luck. Even a top rogue tracer needs lots of luck to survive. Roll one die, add six to the result, and enter the total in the luck box. No, no, yes. Okay, six, that gives me twelve. So twelve luck. Good. I accept anything five or over. Um, when asked to test your luck, roll two dice. If the result is equal to or less than your current luck score, then you have been lucky. If the result is greater than your luck score, then you have been unlucky. Each time you test your luck, you must reduce your luck score by one point. There will be times when luck points are restored, but if you find that you have no luck score, you will be unlucky in any test. Fear. Roll one die, add six to the result and enter the total in the fear box. Since the Gromulans rely so heavily on illusions calculated to scare, you must at times test your fear factor. A bad state of mind can affect your stamina and skill, and you may be asked to, you may be asked to reduce these if you um, if you fail the test. Determine if you are frightened in the same way as as, as you determine luck. See above. The fear score stays the same th uh, throughout the mission. Okay, so that's all another die. No. Yes. Okay, so that's a 12 uh, fear score. Okay, time. Time is crucial in this mission. You must complete your task before time runs out. You begin with 48 time units, which will reduce as you progress in your quest. Note, that, uh, note the reductions carefully. Uh, do not waste time, but spend time gathering clues that will save time later on. If your time score ever reaches zero, you have failed. The Gromulans have extracted the defence codes from the President's brain. Okay, so time, 48 units. Forty-eight, there we go. Combat. You are armed with a catchman which you can use to avoid combat, but you'll have to fight your way out of certain situations. If you have to fight, it will usually be hand-to-hand -hand against one opponent. However, there will be occasions when you have to fight with weapons. In both cases, the rules of combat are as follows. Record, uh, 1. Record your opponent's skill and stamina scores in an encounter box on the adventure sheet. 
2. Roll two dice for your opponent. Add its skill score. The total is its attack strength. 3. Work out your own attack strength in the same way by adding the roll of two dice to your skill score. 4. If your attack strength is higher than your opponent's, then you have struck a good blow. Subtract two points from your opponent's stamina score. 5. If your opponent's attack strength is greater than you have been hit, subtract two points from your stamina score. 6. If both attack strength strengths are equal, then you have avoid avoided each other's blows. 7. Adjust stamina scores and begin the next attack round. Uh, 8. Repeat the sequence un until one stamina score reaches zero when the fight is over. If you lose, this usually means death, but there will be occasions when you can crawl away and try to build up your stamina again. If you throw double six at any time while fighting an android, then you have found the weak spot and deactivated it. Oh, brilliant. Feats and tasks. In certain special cases, you will be asked to use your stamina and skill scores for other purposes, such as aerial combat, shooting at craft, etc. In these cases, you must enter details in the special encounter boxes on the adventure sheet, but you must not reduce your real stamina score. Um, throughout the mission, you will be asked to determine distances to jump, leap, swim, etc. by the roll of the dice. Um, and to determine your ability to achieve these feats by adding the roll of a die to your current stamina score. You must enter these details in the physical tasks boxes of the adventure sheet, but you must not increase your actual stamina score. Good luck. Message ends. So, you'll be asked to use your stamina skill score for other purposes. I see. I see. Okay. Okay, there's Adventure Sheet. Oh, they've made it look futuristic. That's quite nice. Okay, and here's um, paragraph one. So if you skip the 15-minute um, preamble, you'll be right here now. Okay, so let's go. So we have um, paragraph one. Off we go. You have docked into Earth Shuttle Station 23. All lines to ear. No, all lines to ear uh, Sector 3. Uh, a bright neon light announces. You park your Oberon craft in the short-term airlock and walk down to a dirty-looking ticket office. There's no one around. You bang on the small plexiglass window and eventually a megacorp android appears and stutters at you. It should have been out of commission years ago. It has difficulty in understanding your request for a ticket on the next shuttle, but eventually takes your credit card and utters what you will soon recognise as a traditional Earth saying. That'll do nicely. As you trudge away down the corridor, you hear the mega corpse squeaking at you to have a nice day. There are about 20 seats in the shuttle, of which only five are occupied. You are directed to your seat and given a copy of the safety procedures by a service android, and you sit down on something sticky. The android asks you what you will have. Will you reply, nothing, turn to 199, a cocktail, turn to 69, or food cubes, turn to 203. Okay, there's the... There's the android. Okay, we are going to have some f um, some food cubes. So we're going to go to 203. A good idea. You will need all your energy when you are on the planet. Add one stamina point. Turn to 39. Um... I can't remember if that adds to my stamina or not. It doesn't state that I um that it can't go over my initial skill, so yeah, it doesn't state it can't go over my um not initial skill, yeah, um, in initial stamina, so um yeah, so I can add one stamina. It does not state that I and it can't go over my stamina. I mean, my initial stamina. So I'm going to do it. Yeah, I might as well. So 203, wasn't it? And also, it's a bit strange because there's no way I would have lost stamina now anyway because it's the first paragraph. So it would be stupid if they put a thing there stating that I get one stamina point but there's no way I could have lost it so and it also doesn't state that I can't go over my initial stamina so therefore I'm going up to 24 brilliant um, turn to 39 thank you for the food cube Soylent Green 
Anyway, I like that film. Anyway, um, though it is really depressing. Uh, the shuttle lands in the dark segment of the planet in what appears to be a desolate area of Sector 3. There are no habitation lights and you assume that this base station was built in the days when shuttles needed huge landing areas. All the passengers troop out into the station. You look up and see the familiar rocket a higher sign and go over to a shoddy counter. There is no android on duty. You stand there reading zip car brochures while all the other passengers file towards the silver hound which is waiting outside, smoke belching from its rocket outlets. Its destination is Madrid. In the far corner a swee a sweet patron takes a break from its work and looks at you. Do you want? To, uh, do you wait around for a zip car? Ten to one hundred forty-five. Talk to the android. Ten to one hundred fifty-seven. Or join the others in the silver hound. Ten to one hundred seventy-three. Okay, we're going to talk to the android and ten to three hundred and fifty-seven. You walk towards the android. It drops its vacuum attachment and goes out of a side door. You follow, turn a corner and find it waiting for you. It presses the code match signal and you respond. It is one of the planted androids. It gives you as much information as it has gleaned. It tells you that the, uh, the Groms are based in four cities and that the Silverhound bus is the only mode of public travel to these cities. Uh, the Rocket Ohio company has withdrawn its services due to lack of demand and private zip cars are few and far between. All high-level Groms are linked into the bases through their COM terms. If you can get access to one of these terminals, you could probably get a lot of important information. When its message has ended, it begins to self-destruct. Turn to 72. Okay, is this picture for us? I think it is. It's self-destructing, isn't it? Okay, let's turn to 72. Here we are. You board the bus. All the passengers are from the shuttle. You sit down and strap up. The silver hound lurches and then speeds off. From their conversation, you detect that most of the passengers are sales reps, the main topic is the price of salt mining equipment. One passenger, obviously a Grom, sits ahead in the small first class section. He is being attended by his own android. You begin to doze off while the vid screen in front of you shows endless adverts from Galactic Ents Inc. I deduct two time units. Let's be down to 46. Whoops. There we go. Suddenly you wake up with a start. You look out of the window to see lights flashing. The bus slows down and lands in a swirl of dust. Two Grompole androids get in and announce that they want to check IDs. When they see your rogue tracer's license, they grab you and throw you outside. Do you run for it, turn to 385, or go along with them, turn to 119? Okay, we're going to go along with them and turn to 119. You are pushed into the Grom pole craft and made to stand in front of the Grom commander who is sitting down. He watches you very carefully then asks who, whom you are tracing. Yeah, they mean whom, not who. And then, ask you who uh, then asks whom you are tracing. Do you give him a name, turn to 312, or refuse to speak, turn to 54. Now we're going to give him a name and turn to 312. Um... You give him a likely felon's name. Now the Grom is immediately suspicious. Rogue tracers never reveal targets, even under pain of brain scan. He lets the bus go. He stares at you and you stare back, noticing how slight he is and how useless he would be in a fight. Just then he disappears and the inside of the craft becomes a square white box. Uh, the walls, roof and ceiling begin to close in on you. Spikes appear all over the surfaces and begin to ooze blood. Test your fear factor. If you are frightened, deduct two stamina points. Everything blacks out. Turn to 182. Okay, let's test our fear factor. So, um, 312. I'll be right. Let me just double check that the... Um, 
the fear score stays the same throughout the mission. Okay, so pretty much I'm guaranteed to do successful at every fear a test, aren't I? But I'll do it anyway. Um, need this to be 12 or lower, which it is. Good. Okay. Um, so we don't lose two stamina points. Everything blacks out. Turn to 182. When you regain consciousness, you are facing the Grom. The craft is speeding along. The Grom smiles and expresses his apologies. He has checked your ID with base station and it matches information about known rogue tracers. He asks you if you play chess and you agree to a game. Immediately a beautiful set appears suspended in mid-air. He tells you that they will be making a stop burst but will get you back to the bus as soon as possible. You find him to be very intelligent and galaxy-wise. He wins the game easily. Now the craft settles in a Grom pole station. You stay in the craft and watch the Grom who is talking to two guards outside and pointing towards you. In front of you is a standard IPX computer. Do you trust the Grom? Sit back and relax. Turn to 270. Take the opportunity of getting information from the computer. Turn to 126. Or steal the Grom pole craft and fly away. Turn to 163. Okay, we're going to trust the Grom. Sit back and relax. And turn to 270. You sit back and watch the flashing lights and controls. After a time, you fall asleep. When you wake up, you look out of the window and see the Grom heading back to the craft. Add one stamina point and turn to 91. Okay, so add a stamina point. Let's drop to 25. Turn to 91. You set, excuse me, you settle back in your seat. The, uh, you settle back in your seat. The door slides open and the Grom comes in with two Grom poles. He throws you a food cube and asks if you want to wash. When you have freshened up, you speed off to catch the Silver Hound. Add two stamina points. Uh, deduct two time units and turn to 381. So another two stamina points, but two fewer time units. There we go. And turn to 281. Okay. Self-destruct begins at its feet and it dutifully answers your question. Uh, the administrative building is for Androids only. Um, have I gone the right way? Sorry, let me just double check that. I feel somehow I've gone the wrong way. 182. Just double check this. I haven't done this book in a while, you see. Um, 270. 91. Oh, it's 381. Sorry, not 281. I knew I'd done something wrong. 381. My apologies. I, I thought I had because the next paragraph didn't make any sense. Okay. Um, the Grom Pole craft accelerates and soon flags down the bus. Uh, the Grom Pole android tells you to have a nice day. You get on board. The other passengers try to ignore you. Turn to 22. There we go. The Silver Hound lurches off and you have to listen to the rep's dirty stories about the pleasure planet of Luxurious. Eventually you reach Madrid and everybody gets off. Turn to 179. You make your way towards the Silver Hound Terminal. A few natives wander around carrying heavy cases. In the craft park there are two buses, one marked Roma and the other being repaired by a team of, mech of mechnoids. You see a sign marked services and head towards it, turn to 235. 
you find that there is only one route that links the northern sector. Most services have been cancelled due to lack of demand and there are considerable delays between stops. While you are working out the times, an android stands next to you and you feel the code match pulse on your chronograph. Uh, deduct two time units. Do you signal back, turn to 350, or decide to follow it first, turn to 152? Okay, Silverhound Rocket Company route map. Brilliant, really, really detailed there. Oh, there's no Africa. Africa's gone. No further comment on that. Nice. Um, okay. We are going to follow it first and turn to 152. The android wanders off out of the terminal. You give it a few minutes and then go to the window. You look out carefully. It is speaking to two Grom Grompole androids and it is obvious that it has been turned. Luckily, the planted androids do not know what you look like. The turned android moves off and fingers its stun gun as it passes a group of Halgans who are trying to break into a food cube dispenser. Do you follow the android, turn to 238, or approach the Halgans, turn to 29? Okay, we're going to follow the android. Dead at 238. Okay. The android walks at a standard pace in a westerly direction. Most of the tall buildings are crumbling, and as you walk along, you notice that some side streets are still inhabited by natives. Now the android reaches an area full of bushes and trees from which rises a very old and grand building in an excellent state of repair. Do you attack the android, turn to 63, or carrying on following it, turn to 135? Okay, we will find out what we're doing in the next video. So I will just uh, put the next paragraph as 138. And in the next video we will be finding out... Uh, sorry, 238. What is it with me in getting the... Uh, paragraph number wrong today i'm sorry about that um anyway so we'll find out whether we're going to attack the android or carry on following it thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed the uh, the book so far and goodbye